everybody. I am Yana from Port Cosmos and today I'm going to show you how I make dreads. Next, you're going to want something like a piece of fabric, kind of like this long, that you can tie between um, two table legs or two chair legs. So I'm just going to tie this pretty tightly. Just give it a little bit of room here. Because that's what we're gonna t we're gonna hang the hair on here. Ta da! The hair that I like to use is Kanekalon hair. It's called Kanekalon hair, and you can get it in a variety of colors. And I recommend getting it online um, from like beauty supply stores. And what I recommend is getting the kind with the uh, texture. As you can see, this has some texture to it. Some of the hair, the synthetic hair that you can get is slick and it's harder to work with. This has texture so it has more grab to it and it just makes it a lot easier. As far as the size of the dreads that you're going to do, depends on how much hair you're going to um, take from here. So I took that and we're going to wrap it around the, the fabric that I tied together and it's going to be double that. So it's going to be about like that. So that's the size that I'm going to do. So it's going to be like probably a medium, medium small width dread. I'm going to start by looping my hair around, as you can see, around the fabric here. You get in a little closer. You can see. And then, I'm trying to get my camera so it doesn't look funky. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tiny clear elastic and I'm going to tie it around. You can take the hair tie off after if you don't want that on there. Well, first I'm going to take my little wire doggy comb and I'm going to hold the hair kind of taut and I'm going to start backcombing. So you can take your uh, wire cut brush and you can start ratting it what you really want, and you want to get it kind of on both sides, or all sides, whatever. And don't hold it too tight, because you want to be able to get hairs that are going to pull up into there. I don't know how well this is going to work with the um, graduated color. Just really, the biggest thing is to just make a huge rat's nest. So what we want to do. You can even get your, if you feel like you need to like tighten it a little bit, get your wide tooth comb and pack it. Especially once you get um, 
your kind of rat's nest going. You can pack it with the wide tooth comb. Um, it's going to get a little harder with the narrow, narrower tooth comb, so the wide tooth comb works well for, for this. And as you're ratting it up, you'll notice that there's a lot of loose hairs on the edges. So you can just kind of like smooth it down some. And then you also want to make sure, and you can feel like where the inconsistencies are, like right here, it's pretty, um, like here's a, there's a big bunch, but right here, it feels a little sparse. So I'm just gonna wrap that up some more. Yeah, like I said, do it on both sides and all around. So it just really gets ratted up. You want it to look kind of like a bushy squirrel tail or something. Once you've got your nice ratty mess and you're going to have, you know, some tail left. I think I might back comb that just a little bit. You're going to have some, and just keep in mind that whatever length of hair that you get, you're going to lose a lot of the length. Um, so the next step would be, I mean, after we make sure that this is all pretty consistent and the texture we want, not the texture, but the width we want, I like to get my hands just slightly damp. And this is where we start the palm rolling! Roll it between your palms. So next you're going to need a very damp washcloth or hand towel, I prefer a washcloth, a towel to lay on your floor to protect your floor from getting wet, um, a squirt bottle, and you will need a hair straightener. Okay, I've got my flat iron going. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my thumbs and I'm going to roll in one direction. I'm going to press down with my thumbs and I am going to roll the dread. And we want to be very consistent. So just keep rolling. Roll it tight. So that's a nice sized dread right there. And then I'm going to take my little damp cloth and I'm going to cover it up, the dread. I don't, I'm not going to get the, um, what you can call it, the iron on that because that'll just snap off because it'll melt. But anyway, so what we do is, what it is, it's the steam that causes it to kind of meld together. And I'm gonna spray this and get it quite wet. And then when you put the flat iron on, make sure you do it to the side. See, you want that steam. Do it to the side so that the steam rises because otherwise if you do it like on the side, it can, the, the steam can rise and it can burn your thumb. This thumb here. And you don't want to do that. So we just want to go along here. Just for a couple seconds, each section. I 
I'm getting to the end of my cloth. Now, this is where a hand towel might be better than a washcloth, but I just do not like, do not like the big wet cloth. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to start twisting this because I have to move my cloth down. I want to make sure it's not too hot. You gotta wait a few seconds. Make sure that's in there. Okay. Don't touch it right after you've put the flat iron on it. And then like that. And then get the end. And then when you're at the very end of your dread, you wanna just give it a few extra seconds. Because you really want to seal that end off. See how the steam's coming up? That's good. After my dread has dried, you can either keep it like it is, or what I like to do is just go over it really quickly to soften the edges a little bit because they get a little bit stiff. Just soften it a little bit with some palm rolling. And then you untie and pull it off. And there we go. And now I've got my little dread that I can put into my hair with a little clip and it's done.